All right, friends, let's say that you have a center console and you're saying to yourself, should I move up in the world to a sport fisher? That's what this guy did right here. And in this video, we're going to talk about his entire journey, what he's learned, and hopefully you'll be able to take some tips with you so that when you go for that big sports fisher, you choose the right one, you make the right decision for you. All right, Professor, so tell us about the, the, the center console that you used to have, just so we have a, a comparison, because we've got Speechless now, which is a 40-foot Black Hole Express boat, which we love so much. But tell us about your OG boat. I had a 31-foot fountain with twin mercuries on it, and uh, she was only 8-foot-6 wide, but the faster you went, the better it rode. <laughs> and it still was not great. You know what I mean? But it, that boat was just designed to get up on top of the waves and skip across them. And you took that boat out of Oregon Inlet many times. Oh, too many to count. And I mean, we caught a lot of fish on that boat. Uh, one day we were top billfish boat of both fleets on wow. that little yellow boat. Man. So what's been the, what, like when you look at this transition, and, and I know there's probably a list that's too long to count, but let's say someone is watching this right now, you know, they got some sportsmen at home or they got whatever, a center console and they're thinking, do I want to go move up to that big, you know, sport fishing class, whether it's an express or convertible? What are some suggestions or thoughts or just experiences you've had along this journey? Well, uh, I would say probably the, the most important one is you better have a fat wallet. Yeah. That's a... Not even just to purchase the boat, Yes. but the maintenance and the upkeep on it. Night and day. Oh yeah. yeah. Because with your center console before, you would spend how much per year on the on the boat? Uh, let, assuming there was nothing like yeah, mechanically major, yeah. major wrong. I mean, maybe like a thousand dollars. Right. You know what I mean? It just to uh, change the lower unit oil and maybe you know send a proper way to head a ding in it or wax it or something like that. You know, buff it. Or, but really minimum you know cost. You know, when we were looking at boats together, because you know if you haven't watched this channel before. Professor and I have been on this journey together for a couple of years. You can watch how that all came together. But, you know, we, we bought this boat together and I kept seeing on the advertisements, the phrase open checkbook. Boat and it, check it, with an open checkbook. And I, I didn't understand totally what it meant by saying, you know, hey, this, you know, this, this boat has been kept up with an open checkbook. Now I very, very uh, yeah. clearly understand because unless you can go into it with an open checkbook, like you know stuff is gonna happen. In fact, the general rule of thumb is 10% of the value of the boat per year are gonna be your expensive yeah. expenses. And so that can vary, but if you have a million dollar boat, you're probably gonna spend $100,000 a year just on different stuff. It could be more, could be less, yep. but that is a good general rule of thumb. Yeah, and you might only have 50 one year, but the next year you might have 250. Yeah, you that's, know what I mean? and you know, and we're talking about things like slip fees and stuff. And so that's why it can add up. Yeah. Just having a boat like this is a lot more. Okay, so the expenses overall have been dramatically different. So do not base your previous budget on what your future budget will be for maintenance when it comes to a sport fishing boat. Yeah. Okay, what else when it comes to moving from center console life to sport fisher life has uh, has been an experience for you there? Well, I mean, I could go on and on, but I guess we'll sit here and go through a bunch of time is another one. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it takes so much more time. That center console boat, you can spray that off and winterize the systems on it or whatever and put that in your backyard for the winter and forget about it you know what i mean on a trailer or something like that this boat here needs tlc all the time it amazes me how you're so busy on your off days when you're not running charters doing stuff with the boat that's necessary yeah. it's not just you're not just polishing stuff just to polish it i mean you're doing stuff that you need to do yeah. on a on a consistent basis. Yeah. And it's uh this boat is still new to us and I mean we we've done a lot of work to it. We're still working out the bugs. Uh but you know you eventually get caught up on all your little teeny things and uh then you get fixed things that break. You know what I mean? But just the other day we had to put a new fresh water pump in and it only been in there for two years and that one crapped out. You know what I mean? So it's always things like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that happens. Yeah. 
So, you know, when you have more equipment, you have more, more potential failure. Yeah. Let's talk about learning uh, to handle the boat as a captain, going from what was an 8.6 beam to, you know, like a 14.6 beam yeah. and just a, you know, longer boat, of course, like, tell us about that. Well, it's definitely a whole different realm, you know what I mean? Because you could run around in that boat in pretty skinny water, you know, two and a half feet or something like this. Well, this boat draws right at four or 4.2 feet. So um, you gotta be a lot more careful to stay in some deeper water. And the wind has a greater effect on it, you know what I mean? Uh, with all the curtains and everything and the tower, you know, the wind gets pushed on it a lot. And you really need to practice, you know, you just can't go rolling up in a marine on a boat like this. <laughs> and expect to throw it at the dock you know you go practice somewhere you know where nobody's watching yep. and uh where there's not a lot of stuff around that you can damage you know so uh but yeah it's a huge difference huge yeah big time big time difference anything else comes comes to your mind when you think about the difference of being just a traditional center console owner to this big sport fisher well i know when i used to fish on a center console <clears throat> I was a lot more weather oriented my days that I chose, you know what I mean? A boat like this does entitle you to go fishing and push the envelope a lot more on weather days. Um, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, mm. but I have certainly gotten accustomed to sitting up here in this chair and being dry and not have water pounding me in the face, you know, on a rough day. Yeah, speaking of that, what would you say just have been the the most enjoyable components of the upgrade what what has this allowed you to do other than stay dry which is a big one and and you know uh be able to go out in, in more inclement conditions what has this type of boat allowed you to do that you never really could have done before not done the same way yeah well we can pull a lot more rods off of this boat uh, yeah. um it's wider you know you have longer outriggers and uh you can pull a lot more rods get everything more spread out and I'm not gonna say you can't catch fish on a center console. I've caught thousands of fish on my center console, but this boat is more fishy and it's cleaner water behind it. You know what I mean? I it's, didn't know that phrase when we started, but yeah. <laughs> apparently it's a, that's it's, something that y'all captains talk about. It's a very important thing, clean water behind the boat. And, um, you know, I, I just feel like these boat, this style of boat, you know, is better for offshore trolling, you know, just because of the clean water, you get more rods out, have a bigger spread and the maneuverability. You, you know, if you hook a big blue marlin, you back down on him, I can put this boat wherever you want. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and in a hurry too. So, uh, it's pretty cool. I love it. Final question. Was it worth it? Oh yeah, it was definitely worth it. I don't never want to get in the captain's chair of a 31 foot fountain ever again. Don't get me wrong, I love that boat. You did love that yeah. boat, the yellow boat, you loved it. Yeah. Well, hopefully this helps you get a sense for whether it's a center console, or you have something else and you're looking to upgrade to a sport fishing boat. We hope that this gives you a sense for what it's been like for us. And it's been a really cool journey uh, for the professor and for myself and you know, we hope that you come out here with us sometime to the OBX and go fishing with us. We're at slip num number 92 in Pirates Cove Marina, Manio, North Carolina. And so check us out, speechlesssportfishing.com. And until the next time, everyone, stay salty.